Okay, I wanted to show this little text messaging e-learning thing I've been building. Uh, it's not quite finished, but it's heading down the right uh, direction, which uh, is often the most important thing. So as you can see, uh, there's a little timer here, and every time that timer moves, a new text message comes in, and that kind of builds a story, which is nice. You know, instead of just a slide-by-slide -slide kind of thing where it's like one slide tells the story, it's just a text paragraph, the next slide tells a um, how to you know, not be in that situation later. This is a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more uh, maybe what uh, what someone's used to as far as text messaging. It's, it's a different format. So um, I wanted to, let me replay this too. I wanted two interactions here. One, the user can just click the next button and it kind of moves through this at their speed. So once they read it, but say I'm going to let this go, say they don't hit the button it's going to get to the end and then auto move forward. So I could have this last much longer if I want, so they have more time to read it. But what's nice is if they don't hit the button, it will move them forward. It keeps things moving forward, which is nice. And it gets to the end there. Uh, that's all I have so far. So you'll see as this runs out, it will just start moving up blank spaces, basically, because I don't have additional text texts. So... I'm going to close the preview and talk a little bit about how I built this. First off, there's a lot here to look at, um, but a lot of it is just little things that don't mean a whole lot. Uh, you know, like I've got a big rectangular hotspot just to so someone can't kind of click in, in on these things. Um, but really, it comes down to this, the way that these boxes are set up. Each text box, I'll drag this up here if I can. It's fighting me. There we go. So each text box has a number of motion paths. So one just brings it in. So I'm just going to slide it into place. And then I've got two more. One that moves up kind of one height of the box here. So, you know, as the user gets to the bottom of the window and they're not going to fit on the screen anymore, I want to move everything up by by basically one text block. So one motion path moves it into place, a second motion path moves it up one item, and the third motion path moves it up basically two items. Because I wanted I wanted to play around with the idea that, okay, what if there's a bigger text box? Um, can I move them all up that size text box? So really, I just would need a motion path for every size text box. And then it's really easy for me to say, um, in in this case, move it up one, or in this case, move it up two, or in this case, move it up three. And that's pretty much how this works. I put all these text boxes into, into a, I can't remember what they're called, a scrolling panel, uh, which is that little trick I like to do so I can kind of mask things out so you won't see. As these move up, I didn't want it to end up in this space. Um, so that keeps it all kind of contained here. Um, and then you can see my little variable here, which I, I don't know, I didn't just hide it, but uh, I had it off to the side here. I'll often have this running so I can see what my code should be doing. Oh, that box uh, flew out of place because I had moved it. But so I can see, okay, I'm, I'm on two, so I want this one to come in. Uh, now I'm on three, so I want this one to come in, and then four, and five, and six. So basically, I've got a variable, and every time I I click the next button, it's gonna it's gonna check, and it's gonna see. Okay, well, I want to move that up by one. So basically, every time I hit the button, it's going to uh, run a whole bunch of motion paths. Uh, based on the number. So you can see I've got conditions. So it's it, it's a lot of triggers, but it's not really that complicated. It's just, okay, well, let's see here. Um, I'm on one, so because I start from zero, so it'll run through here and I'll say, okay, I'm going to add a one. Okay, now I'm on one. So what do I do? I want to uh, move the first uh, text block uh, I, along this motion path. Um, and I also set them to hidden at first. Um, and so I also just set it to normal if it equals one as well. So then the next time you click the next button, it runs through here again and says, okay, now I'm on, I'm going to add one 
to current text number. All right, so am I going to do this again? No, because I'm only going to do that if it equals one. So I'm going to come down here. Oh, yep, it now equals two. So I'm going to bring in the next text box. And I'm going to show that as well. So um, the other thing you'll notice is that I put all these triggers in its own layer that occur when the layer starts. Now I could have put them on this button here. So I could have had all those triggers right here. So when I click this button, all of those triggers run. Now the reason I like them contained in a layer when I've got a bunch of triggers like that is because, so later, much later, I decided I wanted this little timer here. Well, basically when that timer gets to the end, uh, so you can see I've got a, uh, animation, I've got a wheel, and it lasts six seconds. So that wheel is a transition which will make it look like it's animating in. So when that timer also gets to six seconds, I want to basically call all the triggers that would be on this button. But in Storyline, there isn't a trigger to say, I want to run all the stuff that is on this button. I can't like programmatically tell a click to happen. What's nice is when I click this button, all I have to do is say, I'm going to show this layer. And when I show that layer, all that stuff's going to happen. So when I create this timer and it gets to the end, I don't have to have all those triggers again. I can just say, okay, I'm going to show this layer again. So I can have this all this stuff happen by like four other buttons on here if I wanted to. And I don't have to worry about having like duplicate triggers all over the place. Um, and so I kind of build my own little sets of triggers. Same with like moving one. In the case that uh, I, I've got a, I don't remember how to do this. Uh, how did I do this? Uh, okay, text on screen six. So if, t if there's six texts on screen, I basically check and it's like, oh, yep, I've got six of them. So I'm gonna slide everything up. So once I get past, six, I'm going to uh, start uh, running text shift up, but I'm also going to move one. So basically it might run multiple motion paths, but it's basically going to slide everything up by one. And so you can start to see that there is, a, it's complicated when it all works together, but individually it's just these different buckets and I have them occurring when I want them to occur. So that's pretty much how this works. I just really, really like to group up my triggers like this. I think it's really important if you're doing stuff like this to group them up because if you don't, you're going to have all sorts of duplicate triggers all over the place and, it, and it's going to be far more complicated. So let me, I wonder if I can undo and get this box back to where it should go. All right. So if I run this again, Again, the first motion path just brings it into place. So again, these are all the first motion path on each of these objects. So I'll click through it a little bit and then it'll have one more once that gets done. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now it'll say, oh, the seventh one, I'm gonna move all of these up on their motion paths by one. Uh, and then uh, that's it. So then uh, you can see here basically the person saying that, uh, did you hear what happened and uh, know what? Uh, so you're kind of getting people interested in what's happening here. There was this problem, this shelf tipped and it, it hurt a reach truck driver and they want more information about it. And this is the problem. And uh, do you have a picture of the damage? So um, then, you know, how do we how do we stop this from happening? And uh, basically, I'm going to have another text message from this person that uh, you'll click it, and it'll basically fill the screen up and have some additional information on key things to consider. Uh, obviously, I'll have to have a stopper here so it doesn't keep scrolling up when there's no more text messages. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's heading down the right path and it's built in a way where I can um, reuse it uh, very easily on different projects when it makes sense to use it. So I'll uh, keep working on it and I'll keep you in the loop as to uh, how it's coming along, but uh, thanks for watching.